Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Mariah Lamb, and I'm from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. I am the recruiting and admissions representative at Rothbury International School at the Hebrew University, and I recruit and process applications for our semester and year-long undergraduate study abroad program. Start with this video. So that's kind of just a, a quick little introduction um, today, just to give you an overview, going to talk about Hebrew University, Jerusalem, our different semester and year programs that we offer. I will highlight three specific programs. I'll go a little bit more in depth and I'll go in depth in our undergraduate study abroad program, our spring in Jerusalem honors program, our STEMester, and then I'll kind of move in to talking about student life, student housing, and financial aid. We have a lot of scholarships available in-house. Open it up for any questions. And at the end, I will provide my email address as well. Okay, so why choose to study abroad at Hebrew University? Students are able to study in Jerusalem, which is a city rich with tradition. It's full of creativity and innovation. It's one of the oldest cities in the world. It's also been at the crossroads of civilization for millennia. Fascinating city that I'll kind of go a little more in depth a couple of slides from now. Um, students are able to forge connections with international students from over 90 different countries, and they're able to immerse themselves in Israeli life. Of course, students can earn college credit at Hebrew University, which is a world-renowned top 100 university in the world. Students are able to also experience diverse activities with their new friends, both international, fellow international students and Israeli students through the Office of Student Life. Um, students are also able to go beyond the classroom and experience Israel through either a community service option or an internship option. So you can study and also get some work experience or research experience at one of our 70 internship sites. A little bit about Hebrew University. We were founded in 1918. We are the second oldest university in Israel after the Technion um, in Haifa. We recently were ranked the top university in Israel and we were ranked 90th uh, worldwide. And so we have a very strong academic foundation. Some of our founders are great 20th century thinkers like Albert Einstein and Sigmund Freud. Um, we are also home to eight Nobel laureates, and we have a student population of about 23,000 with 10% international students. Okay, so talking a little bit about Jerusalem in general, Jerusalem is a city of about 950,000 people. It is Israel's largest city. It's also the cultural, religious, and political center of the country. It's centrally located in Israel, so it's really easy to access other parts of the country. We are about a 30-minute drive from the Dead Sea, which so I went there. I am an alumna, and I went there plenty of times whenever I lived in Jerusalem, so about, about an hour bus ride or train ride to Tel Aviv. You can go up to the Galilee area by bus. It takes probably a couple of hours. You also can go to the Negev Desert down south. Um, takes a couple of hours. The great thing about Israel is that it's a small country, but it's very diverse and it has a really great transportation system. So you can access really any part of Israel via public transportation. We are also home to some of the most historically significant sites in the world. We have the Western Wall and the Temple Mount. We have the Dome of the Rock, the Mount of Olives, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, all of these very holy sites that are important to 
um, the three main monotheistic faiths. Um, and all of these sites are actually located in the old city of Jerusalem, which is a one square kilometer. So you can actually see all of these sites in about half a day. Um, and you'll definitely want to explore there. Jerusalem is also home to a lot of modern attractions as well. We have the Mahane Market, which is the top photo, that's where I used to do all my grocery shopping. It is a great place to get food. We, there are a lot of uh, restaurants as well. And then at night, it actually kind of converts to this really great nightlife spot where students, a lot of young people just go there, listen to music, have food, maybe have a drink, meet other people. And Israelis are very warm and welcoming and curious people, and they are not shy. So they will literally just come up to you and say, oh, hello, my name is so-and-so, and then just strike up a conversation. So it's really not hard to meet locals and just kind of make friends there. We also have the Israel Museum, and we also have a ton of festivals throughout the year. Um, and we have the Jerusalem Forest, which is a great place to go for a day hike or a picnic um, and just enjoy some great nature. All right, so talking a little bit about our different study abroad programs. We have our kind of traditional semester and year study abroad program. We have the Spring in Jerusalem Honors Program and the STEM Master. I'm going to go a little bit more in depth into those three programs um, in the next couple of slides. We also offer the Dance Jerusalem Program, which is in partnership with uh, the Jerusalem Academy of Music and Dance. So this is great for dance majors and minors. So students will take a couple of classes at Hebrew University of Jerusalem, and the majority of the classes will be at the academy. Then we also have Jerusalem Sounds, which is great for music majors and minors. And it's also in, in partnership with the Jerusalem Academy of Music and Dance. A couple of courses at Hebrew U, and then the rest of the music courses will be done at the academy. We also have a partnership program with the Betzalel Academy of Art called Art Jerusalem. This is great for art majors and minors and those who are at um, design schools. So you'll take some courses at Art Jerusalem and also take some courses at um, Hebrew University as well. So kind of doing a brief overview of the undergraduate study abroad program, the studies begin with a pre-semester course. In years past, it has been a Hebrew language ulpan, which is a an intensive Hebrew language course. It's about four weeks long, five hours a day, five days a week. It's Hebrew. We are still offering that for students who are very serious about their Hebrew language studies. In addition to that pre-semester course, so students will now have the option. They don't have to only do the Hebrew language. That is just one option. They can do the intensive Hebrew language ulpan. They can do a less intensive everyday Hebrew language course. So it kind of helps them with just everyday language, everyday Hebrews that they'll be able to use while they're in Israel. We also have a pre-semester course, which would be the modern standard Arabic. So if students are wanting to take Arabic, we do offer a beginner pre-semester course. Um, in Arabic. Then we have a couple of courses that are being finalized, but they center around Jerusalem. So one option would be doing an archaeology course or an architecture course about the city of Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a city of layers. It's been conquered, I think, about 12 or 13 times over the millennia. And so you have layers and layers of history. And so the course would focus on that and the different monuments and archaeology around Jerusalem. We also would offer a course on the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, just background in that. So we're finalizing those courses and those will, of course will be taught in English. Those are the pre-semester course, which would last about four weeks. And then you would begin the main semester. So it could be about 15 credits per semester and the courses that you could choose. We have a lot of different subjects. We have Hebrew or Arabic language courses, if you wanna take that. We have courses, lots of STEM courses, 
uh, civilization, anthropology, political science. We also have psychology courses, global studies. We have lots of different course options for students. And students can also do an internship or community service option. To kind of expand on what internships we have available, we have about 70 different internship sites. And students can choose two different types of internships. They can do a research-based internship which is a three credit course. This type of internship would be really great for someone who might be a psychology major, political science, and they want to write a research paper and work in one of our faculties. So we have psychology students who get placed in our brain science faculty. And so they'll be conducting experiments. They'll be working with lab assistants and conducting research and writing a research paper over the course of the semester. So that is worth three credits. We also have a one credit course. So if you have a business major and you're really interested in Israeli startups in the high tech industry, we could place you in a high tech company and it would be a one credit internship where it focuses more on kind of exploring that career and working in that kind of job. So it's more work experience based. In addition to studying, you can also have an international internship and all of that's included in the cost. The internship is not extra at all. It could be really great for resumes to have international work experience in addition to studying abroad. So all students do have to do that pre-semester option. Yes. And yes. among that, you mentioned the the intensive or the more everyday Hebrew and then also mm -hmm. these new course courses which are being set up as an option mm -hmm. and then you the three credit or the one credit options apply both to the internship and the research options i i think i misspoke and probably confused um the research-based internship it is three credits and it is through one of the existing hebrew university faculties so if you have a, an archaeology major, we would place that student in the faculty of archaeology and they would do a research-based internship. And then the one credit is just kind of work experience. The work experience was more when you were talking about like business majors. Business majors, um, nonprofit, we place students at, you know, the UN, at Yad Vashem, which is a Holocaust museum. Someone is a film interested in film, we can place them at the Spielberg uh, Film Archive, place them at a number of NGOs, nonprofits, and um, companies and government think tanks around Jerusalem. Okay, just kind of going over some logistics. Um, we have semester and year options. Typically the semester in the fall, it runs late August or maybe beginning of September and it goes until the end of December, possibly into, I believe this coming fall, it does go into the first week of January. Spring semester generally begins late January and goes until early June. We do require at least a 3.0 GPA and to, the student to complete two full semesters. If a student has close to a 3.0 GPA, but not quite a 3.0 GPA, just appeal to us and you know we would just talk it over with the Jerusalem office and maybe see the transcript and ask some additional questions of the student. Um, but you know, if a student has like a 2.9 or something like that, typically if they appeal, they'll be approved. Some other application requirements, we do require official transcripts, two academic letters of recommendation, an essay, a resume, medical form, obviously a valid passport and a study abroad approval form that's to be approved by the study abroad office. And I know that you um, probably have your own um, application deadlines. And depending on where Passover falls, it's either April 15th or April 30th for a fall and year programs. This year it is April 30th is the deadline. For spring semester, it generally is November 30th or December 15th. This year it is November 30th. So the two deadlines, April 30th, November 30th. And of course, if we have any last minute applicants, like can consider it and be flexible. Bring in Jerusalem honors program. This is for students who have at least a 3.7 GPA at their home university, and they want to take some more advanced level courses at different Hebrew university faculties, not just at the Rothberg International School. Um, we have over, I believe, 11,000 courses across Hebrew University that are taught entirely in English over the 
course of an academic year. So students are able to take those more advanced courses at different faculties, conduct independent research, and they will also participate in weekly lectures and tours. And students are able to earn up to 20 credits during the semester. For this spring semester, the dates were January 30th to June 24th. Um, students begin with that intensive pre-semester course. They'll take a couple of courses at Hebrew U. They'll take an advanced seminar, and then they participate in Sunday brunch lectures. And then they also can supplement their studies with you know, an additional research internship or a Hebrew Arabic language course and just kind of mix or match. And then we also have an automatic $4,000 scholarship for students who are admitted to this program. So if you apply or are admitted to this program, an automatic $4,000 scholarship will be applied to your account. Is the um, application to this competitive, you would say? Anyone who is meets these requirements and then gets approval from the division head will be admitted to the program. It's treated as a cohort. We generally have, you know, a few students, maybe 10 students every spring, but if you meet the eligibility and you want to participate in this program, chances are you will be admitted to it and get that scholarship. Huge incentive. Talking a little bit about the STEMester. So it also is a little bit of a longer program. It is open to juniors and seniors STEM majors. We've just opened it up to fall and spring semester students and year long students. So this is open fall and spring semester. I do recommend spring semester um, over fall semester just because the semester is a little bit longer and if you have a semester bleed into January with an American university, it can be kind of tricky, but it runs from the end of January to the end of June. It begins with the winter Ulpan, and then students will participate in an internship. It's a research internship, but it's a more intent internship in that it's six credit hours. Students have to commit to at least 12 weekly hours and do a research paper. So we have students in the past um, who are biology majors or pre-med majors, and we place them at the Hadassah Hospital in a research lab, and they, they will spend their weeks conducting their research, um, going meeting with their lab assistant, discussing their topic that they want to spend researching for that whole semester. Then they need to put together a research paper, and at the end of the semester, they also need to... Um, present their findings and all of their research to a board of Hebrew U faculty. Um, so it's really great for anyone who's interested in maybe going to med school or grad school um, and wanting to get some really great internship experience. And that's also something that's kind of great about Israel in that it is a small country, but it's also an incredibly dynamic and kind of um, advanced country. Students have a lot of opportunity to access kinds of research opportunities that a lot of other kind of study abroad students might not be able to. So it's it's really a fascinating program and the students who have participated in lab internships have gotten a lot out of it. And then students can also take STEM courses that are offered at uh, the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. And we have a number of courses that are taught entirely in English. We have physics and biology and chemistry and biochem. Uh, lots of STEM courses and hard science courses that are taught entirely in English. And if students want to maybe take elective courses outside, maybe not STEM courses, but if they want to take courses in religion or language or political science, they absolutely can do that. They don't have to only take STEM courses. And they also have the option to do a summer internship add-on. STEM master would end June 24th, but if they wanted to do that summer's internship add-on, it would extend their internship until August 11th. And with this program, how mm -hmm. large has the cohort been and how competitive is it yeah. as well? So we have a few students every year and this course was actually launched fall of 2019. We have been slowly kind of building it up uh, we get a few students every spring, like spring of 2020 and then spring of 2021. We're hoping to get more in spring of 2022. So we're hoping to build it because there is so much 
opportunity with this program. So we're hoping it will really kind of take off because, you know, it just launched at an inopportune time. And so we only had a few students kind of participated in it every semester it's offered. And would you say the pricing is comparative kind of to undergrad study away? Oh yeah, it's the same. It's the same pricing. Okay. Yeah, the same price. Yeah, I think it's just probably going to take a, a maybe that one student who's like, I'm going to just try it out. And then the word of mouth is just going to kind of right. build. Would you say you mentioned biology and you mentioned physics, but what about just like, could it be anything in STEM? Could it be math? Could it be chemistry? You mm-hmm. mentioned pre med too. Mm-hmm. Okay, so yeah. it could be anyone who has interest in STEM could probably find good fit internship yeah. and classes. Yeah, in computer science. I would say one area that we are kind of lacking right now is engineering in English classes, like e- courses offered in English. Great. And it also says up their business. Talk about that. Sure. So if students want, we offer a number of business courses as well, taught entirely in English. um, Israel is kind of referred to as the innov nation, uh, the kind of startup nation. So we do offer, students are able to take a number of business classes, introductory and kind of, if they're interested in entrepreneurship, business, that's kind of the area. We do offer a number of those courses as well, taught entirely in English. Okay, and we'll kind of talk about student housing. That all of the international students uh, live in the student village, which is about a 10 minute walk from the Mount Scopus campus. Um, of course, Israelis also live in the student village, but all of our international students we place in the student village. The dorms are apartment style and they are comprised of four to five single bedrooms. So every student has their own individual bedroom with a door that locks and every student has a twin size bed, a desk, a closet and a window and a bookshelf. And then students will share a dining area, a full kitchen, a bathroom and a living space. Every floor I think has four apartments and the student village, it has laundry facilities, it has a pub, it has a mini market. So students are able to buy things on campus and do their laundry in the student village. There's also a mini mall with a grocery store that is literally a 30 second walk. So students are, can take the light rail or buses and get into the city center. It's about a 15 minute ride. And then there's free Wi-Fi and air conditioning offered in the student village. There's also uh, security guards who are at the entrances 24 seven. Anyone who goes into the student village, they have to show their student ID. And then anyone who has a guest, they have to sign in. They have to show their um, identification and provide contact information. So it is very secure. I lived in the student village for two years, so I'm very familiar with it. And a big difference between Hebrew U and a lot of American universities, we do not offer any meal plans. We have a full kitchen, so if you don't know how to cook, maybe you will learn whenever you're in Israel. Um, You can prepare your own meals. There are also tons of places to eat on campus. We have a cafe in the Rothberg International School building. We have the Frank Sinatra cafeteria um, where you can get a hot meal, get schnitzel, you can get pasta, you can get a hot meal at the Sinatra cafeteria. We also have places on campus with pizza, you can get noodles, salad, sandwiches, falafel, shawarma, if you want. So lots of eateries around campus that are pretty affordable because they've been subsidized by the Israeli government. So you will not go hungry in Israel. Plenty of places to eat. Okay, so we have the Office of Student Life. We have the academic side, which I went over, but now we have the social side. In the Office of Student Life, they are a department made up of Hebrew University Israeli students. And they basically have two main responsibilities are to plan social events and trips around Israel for our international students. And they wanna build a sense of community among all of the international students. Um, And so they do this by planning trips to the Dead Sea, hiking in the Negev, they've done graffiti tours in Tel Aviv, they've gone up to, you know, the Galilee area doing 
um, hikes and tours there, touring different communities in the old city of Jerusalem. And they also plan social events throughout the year. So we have students from over 90 different countries, of course, all walks of life, all backgrounds, all religions. And so our student life, they do a great job really trying to include everybody. They love to celebrate. And so, you know, students, they'll celebrate American Thanksgiving. Um, they also have celebrations for all of the Jewish holidays in the fall. Of course, Lunar New Year uh, for Christmas, for Easter, for Halloween as well, and breaking the fast for Ramadan. And then the Madrifim also help students them adjust to life in Israel because culture shock is real. And so if students have questions about grocery shopping or transportation or where to travel or understand anything about Israel, they are there to be a support system. There's also someone who's on call 24 seven. There is an emergency line that students are able to call. Just, I was an alumna. And so I remember once I woke up and I was really sick and nothing is kind of scarier than being sick in a foreign country. So I called this number. They came and picked me up. They took me to urgent care um, in a taxi, um, made sure I was okay, sat with me in the waiting room, took me back to my dorm, made sure I was okay checked on me the next day. So it was just really nice having someone there to help kind of navigate that situation for me. Um, and then students also have access to um, our gym and sports center. It's about a two minute walk from the student village and there's a full size swimming pool, sauna, spa area, um, restaurant, great cardio and weight room as well. So it's one of the nicest gyms in Jerusalem. And so students have that access for free. So we have about 2,300 and they come and whenever I was a student, they come from 90 different countries. So I met students and they're still my friends today from Iceland, Mongolia, Japan, China, Turkey, Ethiopia, Uganda, Brazil, Australia, of course, the United States and Canada and Spain all over. So you will meet students from every background you can think of. So safety is a top priority at Hebrew University. The campus itself, it is fully secure. And so for students or anybody to even get on campus, they have to show their student ID and they go through security guards who check the ID, check your bags. You go through a metal detector. They have security kind of walking around campus 24 seven the same at the student villages. When students arrive in Israel, the first thing they'll do an orientation and they'll also do a safety orientation. And so they'll kind of go through, all right, here's some areas for you to maybe avoid during this time, or if there are any developments at all, the Office of Student Life and, you know, the Hebrew University, they are in direct contact with students. They'll send out like a text blast, an email blast, um, just letting students be aware if there are any kind of developments or there's tension in this part, be sure to avoid it. If there's any kind of emergency, immediately the Office of Student Life jumps into action to make sure all of the international students are accounted for. Um, I would just like to say that Jerusalem, I lived there for two years, and you want to practice kind of the same precautions as you would in like any American major city. Jerusalem is significantly safer. It's not kind of what you expect based on what you kind of see in the news and stuff. So we have a growing number of Palestinians and Jerusalem residents who go to Hebrew University. I don't have the number off the top of my head, but I want to say it's definitely in 500 that I'm aware of, and it's growing every single year. So those are domestic kind of domestic Palestinian students? Or... Yes, and of course we have international students from countries like Turkey and Jordan. And uh -huh. yeah, and we have a special program for students who live in East Jerusalem or the territories and they'll come and get their undergraduate degree at Hebrew University. Um, and so financial aid, we have needs-based scholarship through our New York office. So students can qualify for up to $4,000. Um, and we base that on a student's EFC on their FAFSA, so their estimated family contribution. And we kind of use that as a scale. And then uh, the Merit Scholarship is a $3,000 scholarship. We have the Pandemic Mobility Support Fund. So this is for anyone who's been affected financially by the pandemic. And so 
They can apply and receive up to $3,000. We also have a Spring in Jerusalem scholarship, $4,000. The Lewis Levine scholarship is for anyone who's interested in pursuing um, a career in genetics. It is a very specific <laughs> scholar, very specific. Um, but students are eligible for $3,000 for a semester. We have a legacy scholarship. Anyone who is a grandparent, parent, or sibling who's gone to either Hebrew U or Rothberg International School can receive $3,000. We also have a diversity scholarship. So anyone who comes from a diverse background can be eligible for to apply for a $7,500 scholarship. And we also have different community and regional scholarships as well. Um, it depends on the scholarship. I know the merit scholarship's a little more intensive. You have to submit your transcript and, you know, an essay and recommendations. But the needs-based pandemic mobility, those are, it's just a one page that you fill out. Um, it's on our website. Spring in Jerusalem, it's a one page that you fill out. And then if you're accepted to our Spring in Jerusalem Honors Program, you're like, auto, it's automatically applied. Legacy, it's a one page kind of just sheet that you fill out. Diversity scholarship, I think it is one page. And then I think you have to write an essay, um, just a quick essay. And so they're not as intensive as a lot of scholarships. I think basically you can expect to pay Concordia tuition and room. Uh, and then we cover your tuition and room there. As Mariah mentioned, there's no meal plan. So you would be responsible for covering your own meals while in country. And then there is a $2,000 Kind of additional fee that we charge for this program and all of your financial aid and scholarships does travel with you yeah and from our end at concordia you know you're you're an adult and we trust you to make appropriate decisions so typically study away students like they can travel within the country they're in they can even travel to nearby countries and mm -hmm. they can travel before and after their program as long as you know you take regular measures for your own health mm -hmm. and well-being all of our undergraduate study abroad students, they per semester, they come with like a certain number of points. I think it's 10 points and they can use that for these uh, excursions. And then they also plan lots of social events as well. It's often the case that um, Concordia students can get a peak while they're abroad. You just have to work with a mentor on campus to kind of like set it up related to one of your abroad courses or internships or whatever.